Hi, Tanya Vihovsky here, and I am reaching out to everyone today to talk about how incredibly important it is that you vote in the August 9th primary. The primary is how we decide who is on our ballot. Today, I'm going to talk about the different ways you can vote, at really focusing on absentee voting. You will not get a ballot in the mail automatically like you have for the past couple of elections. You have to make a request to get your ballot, and there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can go to your My Voter page at the Secretary of State's website, and you can log into that, click which elections you want ballots for, and hit request, and that will automatically send the request to your town clerk's office. That's what I did this year, and I got my ballot in a couple of days. You can also call your town or city clerk and ask for a ballot and they will send you one. You can also go to your town or city clerk's office and either take a ballot home with you or vote right there in person when they're open. If you don't opt for any of those options, primary voting election day is August 9th and you can find out where your polling location is again at your My Voter page on the Secretary of State's office. So jumping into absentee balloting, you're going to get an envelope in the mail that looks like this and there's going to be a bunch of stuff in it. You are going to find three primary ballots. You're going to find a Republican Party ballot, a Progressive Party ballot, and a Democratic Party ballot. You can only vote on one of these ballots. So choose the ballot you'll be voting on. For me, I'm voting on the Democratic primary ballot. So I'm going to take the other two ballots and I'm going to put the, them in this unvoted ballot envelope. And I'm going to seal that and put that in the return envelope. You do have to return your unvoted ballots to the town clerk's office um, along with your voted ballot. Once you have decided that you're going to take, for me, the Democratic Party ballot, and that's the one I'm going to vote in, you want to make sure that you're using a black pen or a pencil and that you're following the directions in this purple part on top as well as in each individual race. In different races, you can vote for different numbers of candidates. For U.S. Senator, you can vote for one candidate, but for state senator, you can vote for three. Um, you don't want to vote for too many candidates because what happens if you vote for more than you're allowed to is your vote in that particular election won't count. It'll still count in the other ones, but it, if you vote for more than one in the U.S. Senate race, for example, then it'll be considered an overvote and it won't count. However, due to some really awesome legislation we passed two years ago, if you do that, the town clerk will give you a call and let you know and give you the opportunity to come in and fix it and revote. Um, you don't have to vote for the number that it says, so you can vote for less. Like if you just can't make up your mind about a race, you don't have to vote in that particular race. Or if you've decided, you know, I really only want to vote for two of these senators, but I get three votes. That isn't considered a ballot error. So you can make that choice. Don't forget to look on the back of your ballot also, because there are races on the back of the ballot. And so you're going to fill out who you want to vote for. And then once you're all done, I know I'm not done yet, I'll go back and vote for the rest of these later, you are going to put this ballot in the voted ballot envelope, and you're going to seal that. And then the front of this has an affidavit to fill out that sort of says, this is my ballot, I filled this out. And so you're going to print your name, the town that you live in, sign it and date it, seal it, and then also put that in this return envelope ballot. Or, so all your ballots are in here, the two unvoted ones, the one that you voted sealed in that affidavit envelope. You're going to seal this up. Some town clerks are asking that you put a return address on here as it just makes it easier for them. Um, and then you are going to put postage. And I've heard from a bunch of people that you need more postage on this than just a regular envelope due to how heavy it is. So check with your post office about how much postage you need if you're going to mail it back. If you are not going to mail it back, you have a couple of options for returning it. You can drop it off at the town clerk's office. You can also drop it in one of the many ballot drop boxes that have been installed throughout the district. Um, a lot of those are located on town and city property. I know here in Essex, ours is at the town clerk's office. It's open 24 hours a day, so I can go by anytime it's convenient for me and drop my ballots into the secure ballot drop box. 
if you are getting really close to election day and you don't want to mail it because the mail can sometimes take too long and in Vermont you have to have received the ballot by August 9th for it to count um it's not a postmark date so if you're starting to be maybe within a week of the election it probably makes sense to either drop it at the town clerk's office drop it in a ballot box or you can take it to your polling place on election day and just drop it there so there's a bunch of ways that you can vote absentee and i hope that everyone gets out and votes and takes part in our democracy because i know that a strong democracy is a participatory democracy where everyone is engaged and i hope you're having a great summer thanks so much Thank you.